Greetings, you're listening to Technically a Conversation, a podcast where we talk about podcast things and hope that you find it interesting as well. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to scare anybody away either. Oh, sorry about that. I am one half of your host, Jose, and I'm joined as always by my lovely co-host, Isela. Yes. How are you doing today? I am good. How are you doing? Doing good also. Enjoying the lovely weather. It's raining. Uh, I would if it wasn't for the humidity. I think I have what um, Cardi B would refer to as a WAP right now from all the humidity. Is it Cardi B or Nicki Minaj? No, it's not Nicki Minaj. Uh, no, eh, I, well, I don't know. Is, yeah, yeah. I think it might be Cardi B. Cardi B, yeah. yeah. So suffering from a little bit of WAP right now just due to all the humidity. But aside from that, doing pretty good. Um, I don't know what that is, but I also am a little afraid. Once you said Cardi B, I was like, oh, <laughs> man, this could be the, either really freaking cool or like super dirty. It stands for wet ass pussy. Ah, I like how ass and pussy are right next to each other. Yeah. Well, and oh, reality well, that's, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's normally the way that, um. Uh, you know things are yeah. You know things are normal if normally the ass and the pussy are together. Right. When yeah. they're not, then you've got a yeah a little bit of a problem. Right. Well, I like how this is also metaphorically very correct. Yes. Yeah. It is. Or she was she was very uh, literal. <laughs> yeah, in the real sense of the word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not the millennial sense. Yep. Uh. <laughs> cool. So, are you ready to get started? I am super ready. Very excited. See what you have. So let me ask you a question, Isela. Have you ever had a blood transfusion? I have not. Have you ever had coconut water? Coconut? Yes, I have had coconut water. How do you like it? Um, it felt a lot more like hydrating than just regular water. So mm. I, I really liked it. I mean, I didn't care necessarily so much for the taste, but I think the overall effects were felt really, really good. Okay. Have you ever feasted on the blood of another human? Uh, did you find did you find the blood of another human to be uh, uh more hydrating than water or I've what's never, your opinion about that? I've never tasted another person's blood, so I can't say one way or another. Uh oh. Where okay. is this going? <laughs> okay. Well, I'm 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 kind of making a point here, uh mm-hmm. where I'm heading towards where I'm, I'm getting or whatever. Uh-huh. Yeah, you know, you know what I mean. Yeah, the plane's landing. Yeah. So have you heard the anecdotal stories that coconut water is identical to blood plasma and in an emergency can be safely injected and used as a plasma substitute or even be used in lieu of blood and a blood transfusion? Oh, my gosh. Is that true? Like a medical fact? Well, we're going to find out in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess... You've never had coconut water injected intravenously while suffering a traumatic, life-threatening medical emergency? Uh, thankfully, no. Mm. Holy heck. Okay. Well, have you heard that vegan vampires are drinking coconut water as a healthy alternative to their blood meal? Vegan vampires. Mm-hmm. I did not even know that that was a thing. That's <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's a very conscious, uh, very, well... I guess not just health conscious, because I don't know what blood does for you, but I would imagine that coconut water has got to be a better alternative. Well, aside from blood being very refreshing, Mm -hmm. if all this is kind of smelling like shit, (laughs) then, you know, there's a little bit of a reason behind it. Mm -hmm. Um, Actually, I first heard about this while listening to a podcast a while back, Mm -hmm. and I wish I could remember which one it was, but it kind of immediately sounded suspicious. I remember the host was talking about how Coconut water was being used as a replacement for blood plasma Uh whenever blood plasma wasn't available. And I was like, huh. And I wonder if it's something that's just really new and I had never heard about it. But um, it kind of stayed in my mind. And I said, well, I'm going to start doing a little bit of research on this because it does kind of smell like shit a little bit. Right. And apparently while doing my research on this, I discovered that it's a very popular misconception that people have. Hmm. So... We're going to go ahead and talk about this myth in a little bit of detail. Cool. And try and find out the origins of how the story entered pop culture. Oh. Is there any truth to the story? 
what would happen if one would actually inject coconut water into the bloodstream? Mm -hmm. And does coconut water have any health benefits? Oh, and also, is there such a thing as a vegan vampire? <laughs> yeah, that one especially. We got to get to the bottom of that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my sources uh, for this research were Coconut Water to the Rescue, Parsing the Medical Claims by, El by Elisa Barclay from NPR.org. <laughs> and Can Coconut Water Be Used as a Substitute for Blood Plasma? by Arturo Garcia from snoops.com. Mm. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off with the origins of the story. Now, accounts of coconut water being used as a blood substitute have existed for decades, and they can be traced back to World War II. Some of the earliest reports claim that British and Japanese troops used freshly drained coconut fluid to administer emergency intravenous treatment to their troops. There is actually one study with a sample size of one that noted that this had been used successfully on a man in an emergency situation on the Solomon Islands when nothing else was available. This is according to the Department of Emergency Medicine, Loma Linda University Medical Center, January 13th, 1999. In 2002... The Sri Lanka Sunday Observer published an article claiming that coconut water was the fluid of life and could be used as a stand-in for blood plasma because it's sterile, pyrogen-free, does not produce heat, and does not destroy blood cells. And in case you were wondering, pyrogen is a substance produced by bacteria that causes fevers when introduced into the bloodstream. Oh, wow. So it's kind of a fancy, show-offy way of saying antibacterial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, if I can interject for a quick second. You may. So, I invite you to interject. <laughs> <laughs> I always am hyper aware also of like interrupting because I have a bad habit of doing that, especially when someone's telling me a story and I get really excited. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God! You know? <laughs> so I don't want to do that either. But this study with this huge sample uh, size of <laughs> one. And then how did, I guess it sounds like it was some kind of an emergency situation, but yet the weird thing is, is like in this emergency situation, they didn't have, they had all the stuff for like to inject them or like whatever, but they didn't have like blood. You know what I mean? <laughs> They're like chop yeah. down a tree or chop down a, you know, a coconut. I think it's funny that the first thing they reached for was coconut water instead of, you know, reaching for like saline solution or something. Right. It's like, all right, we're out of blood plasma. All right, somebody go and cut down uh, some coconuts. We're going to use the right. coconut water. To, yeah. Yeah. That's really That seems weird. kind of weird. Yeah. But I, I thought it was very interesting, though, that this actually has been attempted. Yeah. At least once, there's at least one recorded case of it being attempted. Right. And it sounds pretty legit because of your source coming from like some kind of a medical journal or whatever. From the Department of Emergency Medicine, <laughs> Loma Linda University Medical Center, January 13th, 1999. See? All right. So that's that was all I was going to say. That I find that a little fishy, but the source sounds pretty legit. So I can't even like knock it. I don't know. It sounds pretty crazy. Anyway. And don't ever feel bad about interrupting. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't consider it interrupting. I consider you sharing your thoughts, your opinions with me. It's our and conversation. And your thoughts. Yeah, this is Techn technically a conversa conversation, <laughs> right? <laughs> <That's Yeah. true. laughs> so uh, more recently, health-related blogs like Body Ecology and Listverse, which I've never heard of either, <laughs> have made similar claims as late as 2017. So is there any truth to any of these claims? According to Mark Grabber, oh. professor of clinical emergency medicine at the University of Iowa Carver College of Medicine, mm -hmm. it's not an optimal IV solution for rehydration because it does not have enough sodium content to stay in the bloodstream and it could cause elevated calcium and potassium, which could be dangerous. Oh, wow. He does say that, that as a sports drink, coconut water is fine, but the data on all other clinical uses is weak and scant. 
Oh, wow. Which kind of sounds like my, the description of my love life. But <laughs> we can a, scan. That's a different, yeah, that's a little, different story. It's a little cross. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, wow. So this person is saying out of all the other studies or just kind of like, hey, the study this is of one. Of, okay, yeah. But is he, <laughs> is he saying like, okay, at least I know what uh, – what coconut water is and it would probably not be like the best option. Um, that's what this particular doctor says. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, I actually do have some information from another doctor mm-hmm. that kind of goes into a little bit more detail oh, about good. Okay. what could actually happen. Okay. I'll just be quiet. <laughs> so no, 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 no. <laughs> I know, Don't be quiet. <laughs> so before we actually talk about what happens if you were to inject coconut water into your bloodstream, uh-huh. I say we take a little cigarette break. Oh, yeah. So grab your cigarettes, grab your Bud Light Lime Tall Boy, <laughs> maybe a coconut water to soothe our parched mouths. Yes. Let's take a little break, and we'll find out after we hear from one of our great sponsors what would actually happen if you were to inject coconut water into your bloodstream. After these messages... Starting out your day on the right foot is crucial to ensure you have a great day. And CC Jitters is here to make sure that day stays great. Serving up everything you need from that trusty cup of coffee brewed from 100% Arabica beans to our famous Baibachinos. Take a walk or run on the wild side with our specialized drinks like the Flash, Cicada, Killer Frost, or Zoom. Or if you need an extra shot of caffeine, the X Espresso is sure to wake you up. Stop by at any of our Central City locations. There's sure to be one by you. We're also located in the Windsor Heights, Petersburg, and Mounds View areas. Not a CC's Jitters nearby? No sweat. Hit up one of our vending machines, serving up our best-selling cappuccino, latte, espresso, or decaffeinated coffees. Follow us on the socials to sign up for our monthly trivia nights, where the winner walks away with a $75 Jitters gift card. And now, back to the show. So how was your break, Isela? It was lovely. Had a nice, not coconut water, but I had a a nice big gulp of (laughs) of just regular water. Well, actually spring water. You didn't hit up the Circle K and... Get a pack of Marlboro Lights. <laughs> I'm trying no. to cut down. <laughs> <laughs> Your Bud Light Lime Tall Boy. No, I I don't no. even know if I want to knock those things because apparently <laughs> my I have some, some neighbors that like really like it. Yeah, no, I've never tried it, but um, I I saw it yesterday when I went to Walmart, mm-hmm. and I was like, hmm, Bud Light Lime Tall Boy. Right. It just kind of seems like if, if it's not possible to make Bud Light taste any worse. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I think that they've achieved it with this one. I feel like that's the idea behind the lime in the Corona. You know, people do like the lime in the Corona. To take away the, the skunky. Is it the skunky? Yeah. It's, I mean, that's never necessarily been like my preferred beer. I like the way it smells. I like the way lime smells, but that's. I'm, you're talking to someone who also likes the way bleach smells. I know. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a serial killer, I promise. But yeah, yeah. But I. What, did, what were those ones that we had? Those are the strawberita or whatever. Yeah, it was like. Um, be- yeah, that thing be- gave be- me heartburn for two days. Oh God, sorry. I won't bring those over again. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no, no! The ones that we topo had were the topo chico. Yeah, yeah the topo chico I ones. I was going to say pepe. I don't know who the heck pepe is. <laughs> the, the pepe chico the ones. Pepe chico, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so those were tasty for me. I guess not for you. Sorry. No, no, no. Those were good. Yeah. But the um, the strawberry lime marita or whatever, that one was pretty. Yeah. Hard in my stomach, or at least on my esophagus. Yeah. Like I felt like I had, um, like, you know, when you burp something and it tastes the same, is, is, is that acid reflux? Uh, acidic, right, right. Yeah, oh, yeah no. I had that for about two days. Yeah. Oh, God, that sounds awful. Yeah, it like, was not very enjoyable. I, I want you to remember me, but not, like, necessarily like that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay, so before our break, 
I posed the question of what would actually happen if you were to inject coconut water into your bloodstream. Now, according to Dr. George Yagmore, a licensed doctor and assistant professor of clinical medicine at the University of Southern California's Keck School of Medicine, while coconut water is a good source of calcium, potassium, and magnesium hmm. as an oral hydration source, these same elements are concerning when it comes to intravenous use of blood water or of uh, coconut water. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so check. So check out what coconut water would actually do. Coconut water could cause cerebral edema, <gasps> which is swelling of the brain. Oh. Blood hemolysis, uh-huh. which is the destruction of red blood cells, worsening kidney failure, what? heart arrhythmia. Oh my gosh. Which is a uh, proper beating of the heart uh-huh. and many other neuro- neurological complications. There may also be irritation at the injection site, <laughs> which, considering everything else that could right. go wrong, <laughs> irritation at the injection site sounds like the least of your worries. <laughs> yes. That always reminds me of um, do you remember those commercials where they were like for a detergent and they're like, it gets out you know, sweat and blood and like all this crazy, weird bodily fluid that they're talking about. And I'm like, really? Who's thinking about laundry if you freaking bashed your face in and your shirt's all full of blood or something? (laughs) Anyway, so continue. Yeah. Yeah, no, I just thought that was very funny because I was like, hmm, I'd much rather have a mild rash than brain swelling or exploding (gasps) blood cells. Right. Even your heart beating all freaking (laughs) weird and stuff. Oh, no. That's, no. Yeah, no, that's not just a bad day. That's a bad life right there. (laughs) That's the end of your life. (laughs) (laughs) Now, are there any health benefits to coconut water? Now, according to Robin Chutkan, Mm -hmm. a gastroenterologist and an assistant professor of medicine at Georgetown University, It is a great alternative to sports drinks when used for dehydration. Mm -hmm. It has electrolytes without the citric acid, sodium, citrate, and sugar that Gatorade has. Mm. And the citric acid, sodium, citrate, and sugar can actually make diarrhea from conditions like colitis, Crohn's disease, or gastroenteritis worse. So if if you do have any type of um, conditions like that, coconut water would actually be better than drinking Gatorade. That's wild because I don't see anybody ever announcing those types of side effects. And I mean, I think I only know a couple a couple of people that have Crohn's disease. But I mean, I heard it's definitely a lot more common than we originally thought or that I originally thought. I feel like that should be on commercials. Yeah, it should. Like when you get um, pretty much any type of medication. Right. It it lists the side effects that are worse than the condition it's treating sometimes. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. (laughs) So um, also according to Mm Snopes.com, to date, they have not been able to confirm the existence of vampires, vegan or otherwise. Interesting. In case you were wondering. So you're saying there's a chance. (laughs) There is a chance, but they have not been able to confirm the existence of vampires. Okay. Vegan or otherwise. I I feel like you you would be a, you should start the vegan vampire craze. Um, you know, I feel like I already... was looked at. You're a great at. leader. You're a great leader. You could start that movement. <laughs> if anybody can do it, it would be you. But then you got to ask, do you want to? <laughs> and that might be <laughs> the bigger question. I feel, I honestly feel like people look at you a little lesser than when you say you're vegan. They kind of like, oh, your body can't take this. or You know what I mean? It's and it's not that it can't take it. It's just we choose not to. But try to tell those people that. You know what I mean? So maybe if I throw in a vampire afterwards, maybe I'll get some of that, some of that cred back. Be like, yeah. vegan vampire, bitch, what? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. It sounds so weird. That sounds super tough, actually. I, don't I know. like it. it. Sounds <laughs> so tough. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. So the moral of the story, if you're dehydrated, Coconut water is not a bad substitute for synthetic sports drinks. If you're bleeding out, you may want to stay away from the Solomon Islands unless you think big brains are hot, literally. (laughs) (laughs) So um, I really like the question, 
last week that you asked about what I would do differently if I was going to die in yes. eight years. Yes. So since this is a pretty short topic, mm-hmm. I'm going to share some fun facts about vampires with you. Oh. And if we still have time, I'll ask you a very personal, non-work related question. Always fun. So so since we're... Oh, oh I'm sorry. Go ahead. Just a quick clarification. Sure. Yeah, are these fun facts about vampires, the true bat that lives? Or are we talking about people that do wish that, or they truly live and engage in this culture of like, like a vampire life? Let's go through some of these fun facts and we'll find out. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> okay. Okay. So since we're going to go through some fun facts, now would be a great time to go get the kids, wake up grandma from her chair at the <laughs> dinner table. And let's see uh, these Fun facts about vampires from factretriever.com. Nice. The Muppet vampire Count von Count from Sesame Street is based on actual vampire myth. (gasps) One way to supposedly deter a vampire is to throw seeds, usually mustard seeds, outside a door or place a fishing net outside of a window. Vampires are compelled to count the seeds or the holes in the net then laying them until the sun comes up. Oh, my gosh. So that's why he would count everything. Yeah. Oh, my. That's based on actual vampire lore or vampire myth. That's hilarious. Oh, my gosh. And that's so funny. They're like, I must suck you. Oh, wait. One, two. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. One second. I want to suck your dick. And the next moment, he. Oh, oh, no. Sorry. That's a different kind of vampire. (laughs) Hopefully, he's not using his crazy fangs either. Shit. It's going to be the worst BJ ever. (laughs) (laughs) And then the next moment, he's counting your pubes. Oh. Prehistoric stone monuments called dolmens have been found over the graves of the dead in Northwest Europe. Mm -hmm. Anthropologists speculate they have been placed over graves to keep the vampires from rising. Oh, wow. So they thought everybody was going to eventually turn into a vampire? Is that the way that works? As far as the anthropologists know, they place these monuments over the graves just to keep them from rising. Mm. Or or at least that's what they, they speculate. But since this was during uh, prehistoric time, there really isn't anything that they can go back and reference. Oh, God. This is just something that, hmm. Yeah. Some graves have these dolmens on them and some don't. That's so interesting. Is it possible that, yeah, is it possible? And a lot of vampire lore and mythology has come from Europe. So it kind of makes a little bit of sense. Yeah. Documented medical disorders that people accused of being a vampire may have suffered from include hemotodipsia, which is a sexual thirst for blood, oh. and hemorrhalopia, or day blindness. Anemia, which is bloodlessness, right. was often mistaken as being a symptom of a vampire attack. Oh my gosh. I was thinking about the movie of, um, that one that was based on that Anne Rice book, The Interview with the Vampire. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember that. I felt like that one was portrayed both like, very, very sexy. They, they like, rode that line very, very well. Like, sexy and kind of, like, scary, but, you know, you, they kind of romanticize this whole, like, immortality and stuff like that. Wow. Yeah, and I guess there's a certain um, certain attraction, I guess, to the fact that, you know, somebody's sucking your blood because that's the most, um, I guess, intimate thing you could probably possibly do, maybe. It's, like, it's really, like, the most vital part of you, I guess, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, I can, uh, I'm, uh, I can kind of see it, but that also sounds like even hearing me say that, so I feel crazy. <laughs> I know a lot of gothic people when I was younger uh-huh. and I always thought it was kind of sexy, especially if it was like a really cute girl who was all into that. Uh-huh. But then at the same time, the rational part of my brain was like, I know you can't get AIDS like that, but you know, you start thinking about that like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, what, are, what other diseases could I get if I let this girl suck my blood? Right. Well, I don't think I knew a lot of, like, goth people that were into the whole vampire thing. But whenever you're done, remind me to tell you a really funny slash awful story. Which actually, you know what, we might even save it for another one because it's pretty crazy. Um, but it, it, it does tie into vampires in a weird way. 
Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll finish up these fun facts, yeah. and then we'll see if you feel like sharing that story with us. Okay. I've only got a couple more. Okay, cool. So one of the most famous true vampires was Countess Elizabeth Bathory, who was alive from 1560 to 1614. She was accused of biting the flesh of girls while torturing them and bathing in their blood to retain her youthful beauty. Oh, my gosh. And she was, by all accounts, a very attractive, sexy woman. Really? It reminds, there's an actual vampire facial. I don't know if you've heard about this. I, and if you say no, like, I absolutely understand because you're a man. Why would you ever, like, look into facials, right? Um, but if you haven't, I mean, I don't want to yeah, knock I'm anybody familiar, either. I'm only familiar with the WAP facial, but I think that's a, <laughs> <laughs> a totally different thing. Came around a second time. <laughs> Who would have guessed? Anyways, so with this, uh, with this, um, vampire facial is it I'm, I'm hoping that it takes blood from another like part of your body but then they inject it back into your face and then um, it's supposed to keep like a youthful appearance kind of similar to this countess hmm. I wonder if she was the one who started this vampire facials yeah, she was the pioneer she was in the 1500s yeah, yeah, from what I understand is she used to bathe in it. Oh. She used to bathe in human blood. Had Why was she not locked up? Why did she live longer than it sounds like she should have? I don't know the full <laughs> story about her. Sorry. But I'm not going to lie that does sound kind of sexy in a weird, does it? perverse. In a, yeah, in a kind of perverse way. It does I sound kind of sexy. I think, um, I don't know. I always go back to smells. What does that smell like? Help. Yeah. Does old blood smell? I don't know. That sounds gross. Sorry. Yeah, true. So many things. I think right now that you said smell, because I always get grossed out with smells too. Mm -hmm. So that kind of uh, brought me, snapped me back to reality. Sorry, man. I have a, a story actually, but it's totally not appropriate for a podcast <laughs> oh, okay. that I'll share with you one day. <laughs> okay. I'm really excited. Uh oh. Okay. A vampire supposedly has control over the animal world and can turn into a bat, rat, owl, moth, fox, or wolf. Wow. That's a lot of uh, animals. Things. Yeah. I like how they had the rhyming scheme at the, scheme at the beginning. Bat, rat, and yeah. then they had to fed up with owl. Yeah. yeah. You had some cool bars there. <laughs> As the rappers would say. <laughs> According to several legends... If someone was bitten by a suspected vampire, he or she should drink the ashes of a burned vampire. To prevent an attack, a person should make bread with the blood of vampire and eat it. Oh my God. And actually, by the way, that is also the secret to a great sourdough. What? <laughs> <laughs> quiz knows I'm on to you. Whatever. I don't know quiz knows. Oh my goodness. That is, these are really crazy because, first of all, what are the ratios like? Like, how much blood would I have to eat? <laughs> That's so wild. And it also reminds me being that I know you have Catholicism in your background, you know, way back there. Um, Ashamedly, I do. But they, they, they say those words. This is the blood of, uh, the blood and body of Christ. And then they give you the, the little the cheese it thing. Yeah. So I guess are we engaging? Are we engaging in a ritualistic, cannibalistic behavior? I know. I feel like maybe they aren't really realizing that they kind of are. Yeah, yeah they should be kind of uh, attuned with that. That's interesting. Oh my God, what if Jesus was the first vampire? <laughs> <laughs> that would be crazy. The first vampire. Huh. So those are all my fun facts. Some of them a little funner than others. Yeah. I have one now, fun fact. Um, okay. I had, I had watched some, I don't know if it was like a PBS or some kind of a show. And it was talking about vampires, the bat. And they were showing how they would swoop in and really kind of kill the inventory of the farmers that raised cows. Because that's what they would like feed off of. And they would like swoop in and then they were like, they would take little bites and sucks and then come back up. 
So I, I thought that was really interesting because I didn't know for sure. I just thought that was, I didn't really know that they really fed off of the blood of any animals. So that was kind of weird. And the blood of Christ specifically. Blood, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they they do the sign of the cross <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with their low wings. Um, but so another thing that they had said was they were holding like some experiments to see if they had any kind of like family tie. Well, I guess like familial ties or something like that. But they had one bat locked in a cage. But, you know, the other bat could see him and the other bat could fly around. And they would bring this big bucket full of um, blood. And so the As one that do. was, yeah, that would feast like crazy. <laughs> so the one that was able to fly around would drink. And meanwhile, his buddy or his like bro bat was dying. And he would start to see that. And he, after a while, he would start to take some drops and feed, like mouth feed to the other one. So they had, like, empathy. Yeah. It's always really interesting when you see altruism like that in the animal kingdom. Right. Because you think that altruism is something that's very human. Right. But when you see it in the in the animal kingdom, it kind of makes you wonder, you know, what, what the uh, motivation behind it is. Because they say that there's really no altruistic True. motivation <laughs> for humans. You know, it's all, there's always, like, oh, what's something in it for behind me? it. Yeah. yeah. Sadly, this yeah. is so true. Yeah, it it was pretty fascinating. I'll see if I can find it. You know what? Now that I think about it, it was probably one of those um, short little learning type tidbits. I don't know if it was PBS, but it wasn't a, a TV show now that I think about it. I'll see if I can find it because it was pretty interesting. I will say that. Cool. Okay, so now I'm going to ask you to do something that I usually discourage you from doing while we're recording a podcast. Uh-oh. I want you to grab your phone. Yeah. Check your YouTube music. Yeah. And I'm going to guess the last song that you were listening to. Oh, that's probably easy, though, because... Okay, but... so don't tell me what it is. Okay. I'm going to guess. Uh-huh. So I'm guessing <laughs> the last song that you listened to is O Sole Mio by Luciano Pavarotti. That is very random. No. No, I think that you're wrong. That was the last song that you listened to, and I think that you're ashamed to admit it. What? That's okay. You can, we're, you can admit it. We're, we're, we're among friends. Like it says friends. from my history. <laughs> from my history, I've got uh, MGK on here and then Tame Impala, Slow Rush. <laughs> oh, the Machine Gun Kelly? Yeah, I was telling, I, I think I've been telling everybody how I really like his last album. I'm like, I, and com I will be absolutely honest and say that when my daughter came up to me and told me, hey, you got to listen to his last album. And I said, Machine Gun Kelly. And at the time, I'd never heard anything about him. All I knew was that he was like some type of white rapper guy. And he's into machine guns. And he's into machine guns. And his, apparently his name is Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, so, you know, she said, no, no, no. He's gotten into punk. And I, I was... Like, I started listening. I was like, okay, the, now my ears kind of went like this to here. You know, they, well, they were half raised. And then she also added that he teamed up with the Blink-182 guy, um, mm -hmm. Travis Parker. And so by that, I was totally sold off of that. I was like, okay, I got to listen to it. And then after that, forget it. Like, I have been listening to that thing pretty nonstop. Yeah, I heard that song you sent me, and it was pretty interesting. Yeah, it's, it was definitely not what I was expecting to hear from yeah. Machine Gun Kelly. There's no. I was assumed it was rap. Yeah. Yes. Well, I think all his other stuff before that is definitely rap. So I think you're totally okay in assuming that that's. I mean, I assumed that too, but this was not at all what I thought. But I mean, I, now that I've gone through his entire like catalog, though, because I was like, oh my god, that was great. Like, where did he come from? You know what I mean? I like to hear the growth of. Mm -hmm. an artist and um i started from the bottom now we're here i'm just kidding so i started uh from like one of the first eps that he had put out and kind of followed throughout the whole um all the way back up to uh tickets to my downfall and it was quite a growth but i could hear a little bit of that punk already in him so 
Not that far-fetched. Yeah, kind of like Poppy. She started off as being pop, and then eventually she ended up becoming a metal icon. Right. And now, God knows what she's coming up with, but um, <laughs> the last couple of songs I heard from her were not very good, sadly. Oh, that's yeah. so sad. I hate yeah. that. You almost feel let down a little bit, right? Yeah. Like, like you want to like, tell What are you doing? What are you? But I think that's the problem that all fans have. Right. When an artist goes in a direction that you cannot follow or, or one that you don't expect, I think it's natural to kind of feel let down a little bit. or Because I... you, you like an artist for a certain reason. And if they're not doing what you started liking them for, mm-hmm. it's kind of hard sometimes to stay with them. But at the same time as an artist, you get tired of playing the same song. Right. Uh, 270 time days out of a year, however long tours, tours last are. Now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree, but I also think that I part- when I think back to artists that I really particularly like, they've always had a really big arc of like, this is what they sounded like from the beginning, and they sound completely different now. So I think I really appreciate the growth in some but when it doesn't sound good and they sound like they're singing about something that they don't know anything about that comes through in the songs and you're Mm -hmm. like no don't sell out don't just talk about like bitches monies and hoes and or i don't know whatever you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so yeah I, i don't mind when they go in a different direction but it's just have they experienced it is it something true can i hear that yeah. That sounds very judgmental of you, so I'll make sure not to share with you the songs that I've written about bitches, monies, and, ho- and hoes. I kind of <laughs> think I've heard a couple. Or <laughs> 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 just singing a couple times. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so we'll go ahead and, and stop it there. Yeah. We hope that you enjoyed the show and that you join us again next week. You can find us on Apple Podcast, Google Podcast or wherever fine podcasts are sold. <laughs> Follow us on the gram and Twitter at greetingstac or email us at greetingstac at gmail.com. The G is for gangsta. You. If you have a story to share with us. 